Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosalie. I want to do a video today uh, showcasing a system I've been using for the last couple of months um, in order to try to get sort of better control over my personal finances. And that's basically a system for trying to triage the process of purchasing goods from the internet. So uh, depending on where you live in the world, you might be a big consumer from websites like Amazon or AliExpress or eBay or all three of them. And certainly I'm quite a big consumer of uh, these marketplaces for tech things. The problem is that even though the purchases might not be that big, $20 or let's say $50, they do really tend to add up. And when I was looking for a system to try to get more disciplined about the way I spend money on the internet, I had to sort of plow through my own uh, brain to figure out, well, why did I tend to just buy things when I thought that that would be a good thing to have? The reason I determined was, you know, I tend to just do quite good research, find a product, do some research about it, and I don't want to lose that research. That's really my fear there. It's not that I necessarily need, let's say a webcam or a camera light or a tripod right now. It's that once I go through the process of evaluating specs and what specs I need and reading independent reviews on let's say Reddit or something like that, I don't want to have, I don't want to lose all that info. And then I always feel that if I'm billing clients at let's say 100 bucks an hour and it's taken me half an hour to go through this research process it's like 50 dollars has been invested in the process sunk cost fallacy clearly uh, but i don't want to lose that time investment i don't want to lose the information and what i thought was a good way to work around my own sort of like mental blocks in this respect was to just get that info out of my head and onto a page and then i know it's in a google um, document or a Google spreadsheet and I can just go back and find it at a later date and that is basically what my system is here so I'm just going to go ahead and create a new um, Google Doc from a template I'll just show it to you here so what I've done um, is I've just run an AliExpress search for a pocket gimbal and uh, this is something that I do actually want at the moment and I was going to say need but most things that you want are truly that they're, they're wants um, so what I've done here is I have gone into my templates folder in Google Drive and I just created a template. Um, I put this up in the blog I wrote about this um, for what I call deferred purchases. And this has the fields I think are important to get that knowledge out of my head and onto the page. And then I review these documents once a month to actually determine, well, okay, yeah, this is something that would be really good to buy. The beauty of this process is that it puts a bit of uh, distance between your shotgun desire to buy that thing from the internet and uh, when you actually make your purchasing. And I find that really, really helpful. I have had uh, the best credit card bills in six months since I started doing this about two months ago. So for me, this really works. So uh, just to show you guys what's in my template, um, I have the purchase details, which is where I just describe what I'm looking at. I tend to buy obscure tech items. So sometimes I need to give myself a bit of a refresher on what I was even looking to buy. Product photos, just to bring it to life a bit. Um, another thing I will say is, I was trying to work through all my hesitations here, and one of them is that, you know, with online shopping, uh, inventory does tend to change, and something you might want to buy now could be out of stock or obsolete in six months. So what I like to do is add these product photos so I can just kind of see exactly what I wanted to buy. Um, and if there is a replacement product, I can kind of keep or resume the shopping process from where I left off. Uh, the cost obviously is uh, very, very important. How much does this thing cost? And uh, I also put in here uh, purchasing sources. So uh, this is where like online wish lists are useful, but uh, certain marketplaces don't have the best functionality in that respect. So AliExpress only lets you store um, up to 10 wish lists. Now that's not really that bad for a lot of people, but I find that a little bit annoying and um, what I like to do is just this way I can have uh, multiple links from different stores. So I tend to, for bigger purchases, often look also at a local supplier to me, compare the costs, compare what I'm getting for the money, compare the shipping speeds, and then make a decision based upon that information. So I can just grab all this info from a bunch of different sites and put it into one doc, and then I don't need to manage 10 or 20 or 30 different wish lists. So if I, were, if I were filling this thing out for one of these gimbals, um, the Xiaomi Pocket gimbal I want to buy, uh, this is kind of something that, yeah, I could probably justify it before the end of the year at some point. 
Um, I'm going to go on, go for one that has free shipping, so it's an it's an even number to work with. So this is the Pam Two from uh, Femi. And just to give an example of what I do is one of these. Um, I just put them all in this folder, so I'd call it Femi Pam Two. Um, and the idea here is that you're trying to create some distance, right, between when you want to buy when the desire to buy something strikes and when you actually go ahead and do your purchasing. So you want to give it a descriptive title so that when you're going over this folder in a month or in three months, depending on when you set your calendar alerts, um, you'll be able to say, oh yeah, that was the pocket gimbal, right? So um, purchase details, I'm just going to say, I would love, I would love to have a pocket gimbal so that I can shoot um, stabilize walking footage more conven conveniently and not have to pack up my full sized uh, gimbal whenever I want to take some shots. And this is where, for, for instance, uh, if I had figured out something about the specs that matter to me, I would jot that down here as well. So, uh, you know, battery life tends to be a lot more limited in these devices. So make sure to check that out and check compatibility with smartphone. Uh, some manufacturers require specific types to activate. So I'm kind of just writing myself a memo as if I'm going into this from scratch in six months time and I've, de I've decided I have another $500 to spend on camera and video gear. So I'm not relying on my memory. Um, and that's kind of, as I said, what was the hesitation to me was I just bought stuff because I was like, I'm never going to remember all these details. So I may as well just get all this out of my head now. And the easiest way is by just purchasing this straight away. So your brain may work differently, but uh, this is me trying to work around my own sort of idiosyncrasies. Uh, product photos, I would just grab those as well. If you can't just copy it from the website, you know, you can just do a screenshot. This is probably violating this AliExpress products copyright, but um, again, the idea here is just to get a visual representation um, and that's basically it. My purchasing source, I'd probably just drop, yeah, jot this down, 170 bucks from AliExpress. And the final thing I have here um, is purchasing rationale. So if you've bought things in a business environment, uh, you pro you're probably familiar with this process of uh, you have to justify buying something uh, by presenting a business case for it, right? So. This is, in a personal context, less formal, but I kind of like that uh, way of looking at purchases. You need to get some value in exchange for that purchase. So this is a place where I can jot down why I think it's worth spending 170 bucks on this thing. And uh, you know, if my YouTube channel were monetized, that might be the reason I'd say, well, I'm getting great views from these uh, walking videos, but it's a real pain to have to bring around this full-size gimbal, and I think a smaller gimbal would be really, really great. Therefore, I think I can justify spending the 180 bucks based on how much I'm earning for YouTube. You get the idea. Final thing I do is, um, so this is where I store these guys. In if uh, just a folder in my Google Drive, I call deferred purchases. And the final thing you want to do is set yourself calendar reminders at a recurring frequency. Um, mine are set for once a month on the 30th. So on the 30th of every month, I'm now going into my deferred purchases folder in Google Drive and I'm taking a leaf through what I bought. Uh, you could see there, if I just jump back into it, I have a subfolder called bought. So sometimes uh, I cheat a little bit and during the months right now, uh, there's something I can say, actually that's a really good thing to buy for my computer or for my business. <clears throat> so I just move it into a subfolder. Um, I also have tried to set up a Google form for replicating this process, but I like the manual method a little bit better personally. Um, and that's basically it. So then set yourself those calendar reminders every month, or you could also do every three months. So you'd have a double-sided process that uh, what you didn't buy after the month, uh, you looked at every quarter or even once a year. Um, and then if it gets past that point, maybe you could say, well, I don't need that stuff. If, I, if, if a year has elapsed and I've decided that that was not a worthwhile purchase, it's probably not something I need. So I really like the system. It uh, bakes that little bit of sort of cooling down period into your online shopping habit. Uh, it works for me because I get the stuff out of my head and I know that it's sitting on my Google Drive for when I need it. And uh, using the system, I've been able to cut down 
on my online spending significantly. Not only that, I think I've avoided buying a lot of things I really didn't need because it's so much easier to look at, at stuff once a month and say, those two things would be great and justifiable for my business. The rest I can live without is just gonna be clutter. So I think if you're going in a minimalist direction with your life, this also plays into that as well. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to get more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel.